just wanna know if you my friend I just wanna know if you pretend I know I've been away So we are here in Hong Kong Oh my God, I'm excited to be here. First off, I just got here, but just looking at the buildings and the scenery, I'm feeling the vibe so far. And this room, let's talk about it. Let's get into it, okay? This room is everything. It's so modern, so posh. It just gives luxury, okay? The bathroom is everything. I love the bathroom so much. And there's a bathtub with a view. So I could be chilling in a bathroom in the bathtub looking out into the water and it's like right next to the shower and the toilet is separate on the side and let's get into this view okay i am right on the water so it's just such a vibe and there are constant boats and yachts that are passing by and it just adds that extra element it's just so dope but anyway i'm actually about to head to 7-eleven to get like some water and some fruit if they have it because this hotel hmm they didn't give me any water <laughs> this is one of those like bougie boutique type of hotels it seems like and they don't even have a refrigerator in here so i'm just like all right i guess i gotta go get water myself so i looked up the nearest 7-eleven it's like 17 minutes away walking <laughs> each way um but i'm gonna just knock it out i mean i could call a grab or something but now nah, we're gonna we're gonna be on foot in in hong kong and we're gonna we're gonna take public transportation and all that because the the taxi to get over here was like 50 dollars so that's already telling me that hong kong is on some bullshit when it comes to these ubers and taxis and whatnot i ain't got time to play so we just we just gonna get on with public transportation and i feel like it's very efficient here so that's what we're gonna do okay so we're gonna get real familiar with with this uh city or sar whatever the fuck it is all right <laughs> i did not know hong kong was this nice like what I mean, I should have figured because it's an island, it's on an island, but it's so pretty. At least this area that I'm staying in, <laughs> it's really pretty. Um, but yeah, that's also the beauty of like walking to different places because you get to see, you know, more sights. So it just adds to the overall experience, you know? But yeah, I'm glad that John wanted to come here, you know, for his birthday trip because this was not high on my priority list at all i mean i eventually figured i would come to china at some point but like it would have probably been like way way <laughs> you know down the line but this is one of the locations he wanted to come to so i was like all right cool let's do it and i'm just like oh this is this is really nice And we found a small little grocery store. Bet, bet. I can get some fruit for breakfast. Yeah, this walk isn't bad at all. It's definitely damn near a 20 minute walk each way. But, <laughs> um, it's not bad. It was hot and humid earlier, but it's 6.30 p.m. right now. So it's cooling down. So it feels a lot better. But anyway, I'll have to head back to the room. I'll holler at y'all later. y'all good morning so as y'all can see i'm on the bus child <laughs> they actually have a shuttle bus that takes us directly from uh, my hotel to i want to say the nearest um train station so i'm going to go there and then my tour guide told me to take a different train from there um she gave me instructions hopefully <laughs> it works out well everything goes smoothly um, taking public transportation in, in different countries can be a bit intimidating initially because you're like, uh, I don't know anything about this. I don't know where to go. Shit is in a different language. But um, once you get the hang of it, it's usually pretty smooth. So I'm sure they'll have some signs in English to some degree. So I should be able to figure it out. But yes, I'm excited for today. Oh, you want 
That was very easy, very straightforward. I just picked up a card, it's called an octopus card, and you basically buy one and you can like reload it, add money to it, and you just swipe it to get on the trains. I took two trains to get to this particular station. One of the trains, it was decent. The other train I got on, I didn't even record in there because it was hella packed. Because there's a lot of people here. A lot of people here are in a rush. So they are like <laughs> moving very fast. So you gotta like kind of move out that way because I'm, I'm not in that much of a rush. But I mean, I live in LA, I'm used to the chaos. I'm used to being surrounded by a lot of people. So I can adjust pretty easy. But yeah, I'm definitely the only black person. <laughs> and there's a million people at this damn train station. But you know, just an observation, you know, but it, it's cool so far. All right, so I made it to the meeting point with like 20 minutes to spare. So I got here in a good amount of time. So I'm just grabbing me some yogurt to eat or whatever. Um, before this tour starts. Oh, this is good. Sorry for my smacking in y'all ear, but I gotta eat. <laughs> but um, it's a lot going on here. Like it's a lot of people out. This is bus right here, people looking at me. <laughs> but. It seems like a very hectic city. Like people got places to go. And they like, hey, get out my way. I got somewhere to be. Period. I mean, I get it. But you know, no one has like shoved me or anything weird. But you know, I'm just like maneuvering out that way. Niggas going to work or whatever they, whatever they're doing, wherever they're going. Gotta get out of niggas' way. All right, I'm gonna finish this and then I'm gonna go meet up with my tour guide. It feels like it's kind of sprinkling right now. I don't know what that's about. Or maybe it's just because it's super humid, but I'm feeling like some sprinkles on me. I'm like, what, what's going on? But it's like warm, like it's not cold at all. It's definitely like warm and kind of humid, but not as bad as Singapore. Singapore was definitely a bit more humid and way hotter than this. This camera I have, <laughs> I have it on like a, a magnet and it's attached to this pole. But this camera is so small, people who are looking at me, they're probably like, why is this bitch talking to a pole? <laughs> why is she talking to a pole? But whatever. Because literally I'm looking, the pole is like completely covering this camera. So people who are behind this pole, they look at me like, this bitch is crazy. Anyway, I'm about to go meet with the tour guide. We are on the tram now. This is so exciting. <laughs> because when I was in London, I didn't get to ride their bus or their tram or whatever they call it and like ride on the upper top level. Um, so I kind of regretted not being able to do that, but it's cool, I get to do that here. Um, also, the dim sum I just had was fire, and that was my first time ever having dim sum. I've never had it before, so it was really good. I had that and some spring rolls. Pretty good, um, but yeah, I'm on the tram right now. Um, this region <laughs> is super dope. Like, I'm really enjoying it so far. Is this that weak ass basketball anime y'all tried to help me watch over here? This is a prison. She said three people would be assigned to one cell. The Okay, so the tour has concluded. That was a nice little tour. It gave us a nice 
overview of Hong Kong. It was raining earlier. I had to buy an umbrella from 7-Eleven. It's still kind of sprinkling, but it has gotten a lot better. But yeah, I'm about to head to the mall now and meet John. He's there now. This is supposed to be a really dope mall as well. So I'm excited to check it out, see how it is. I'm looking at my Google Maps. It ain't making sense. Let me figure this out. I'll see y'all in a bit. How dope is this? This book is how you press the elevator. We were looking for the elevator buttons and they were right here on this book. How cool. This mall is dope. taking care of us so we got two shots again and we got two drinks so we're about to have another round thank you they treating us good i love this bar this is a great bar I'm definitely gonna put my life where it's just like you have to get the program. Get with it or get lost. <laughs> you gotta get lost? You can suffer over there? I don't care. But... I'm one of these chicks. <laughs> oh my god, you're trying to kill us! Uh, this one's <laughs> France. This one's French vodka. France? Yeah, this is uh, from Mexico. Tequila. Oh. Vodka or tequila? Uh, vodka. Vodka. Yes. Good Perry. That's good Perry. <laughs> oh wait, wrong drink. <laughs> Y'all, these niggas trying to kill me. Help, help me. Are you ready to do this? They, they trying to kill me. <laughs> help, help, send help. No, I'm good. cab right now i'm headed to uh meet up with john last night was a lot okay i had so many shots last night <sighs> john is a drinker okay <laughs> when i'm with him i know we're gonna be drinking um so we were basically bar hopping they have a lot of like secret bars here they're like little underground speak easy kind of like a if you know you know type situation <laughs> We basically found them all on TikTok, and um, they were really cute. Very pretty, aesthetically pleasing bars. The drinks were really cute, but it was it was a lot, child. <laughs> so the first bar we went to, um, I had a drink, and then John was like, "We take a shot, let's take shots." So then we had a shot. <laughs> Second bar we went to, had a drink, had a shot. Okay. Then we go to the last bar of the night had a drink another shot that's six shots in total because they put like one shot usually in your drinks that they make um so that was six shots in total and i'm like all right cool done this is more than enough but then the bartender started giving us shots they was like oh y'all from out of town you're from the usa okay giving us free shots on free shots on free shots i was like what the hell the first free shot i was like all right cool the second one He's like, okay, where y'all wanna go now? Y'all wanna go to Barbados? <laughs> y'all wanna get some gin? Y'all wanna uh, go to Ireland? We got Irish whiskey. I'm like, so John was like, yes, run it. So we had a second shot. Child, when they brought that third one, I was like, it's enough. I'm like, I'm done. John was like, come on, just take it. He, as he's putting the shot up, I poured it up. <laughs> I was like, I can't do this. I had eight shots in total. That was probably the drunkest I've been in a very long time. Very long time. I threw up a few times, okay? 
it was not a pretty situation so i didn't record too too much because i was out of it <laughs> i was out of it all right um it, it was just a lot going on um but i had a good time though i really had a good time and yeah it was just really cool uh bar hopping and just walking around and exploring the area hong kong just has so much charm it's so cute here i love it so yeah i've been having a good time but i'm definitely not drinking today so i'm gonna tell him no leave me alone <laughs> no, no no more drinks for me today i'll probably start drinking another day or two but even then i'm gonna I'm take it easy because i'm not even a drinker that's the wild part like i'm going this hard and i don't even drink like that back home i usually reserve my drinking for vacation but even on vacation i don't want to be white girl wasted so i'm like let, let me chill out <laughs> Like, obviously, I can't keep up with John. He drinks like a fish, okay? So he literally, after those nine shots he had, I, I got in a cab and went back to my room. And he was texting me like, oh, I'm still walking around. He's like, I don't know if something's wrong with me, but I'm ready for some more drinks. I was like, bro, <laughs> bro, bro. Um, but, yeah, so I'm about to meet up with him now. We're about to uh, go to what they call the Munster Building. It's these really, really tall buildings that are really close together. Um, so we're gonna go over there, check it out, and uh, you know, hit up a, a few other touristy attractions, and then we'll have dinner tonight, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited for another day in Hong Kong. They're so tall and so close together. So this is a super touristy attraction. There's other people here taking pictures of shit doing photo shoots <laughs> and whatnot. Okay, I'm back on the train. I only got in the cab earlier because it would have been quicker. Um, so I was just like, let me just get in the cab real quick. Uh, but the trains are very efficient here. So I like them so far. And I haven't got on the train yet. That was like super duper crowded to where I'm like squished. Like, you know, like we squished like sardines. So that's good. And I don't wanna tell you to trap me. So we just came here to take pictures and we were basically saying like we're pulling up to these people's projects to take pictures. That's what we're doing. Because you can tell by looking at some of the houses that or some of the apartments that um, it's like lower income housing. But it's just aesthetically pleasing. So it attracts the tourists. Uh, so, yeah, we just all in their space. They playing basketball here. <laughs> they got uh, kids here running. Uh, for school, so they just like living their life and they like, bruh, these fucking tourists are all in our hood. Cause just imagine if tourists came to try to pull up to some projects in the States, like it, that wouldn't work out. If they pulled up to like Jordan Down projects, like <laughs> when I was younger, that, that wouldn't have worked out well. But here it, it works. So my body, so Have you used the bathrooms here yet? No? At the mall? Yeah, here in this mall. Each uh, bathroom, it has its own individual like sink. And it just looks super fancy. It was so nice. Y'all saw it, I showed her. <laughs> oh, the guy one isn't that nice? Oh, damn. It's not nice to me. No, that was super fancy. I had to show y'all that. Like, what? This mall is everything. Asia knows how to do their malls right, okay? How dope is this? They show you what your food is gonna look like. <laughs> how cool. That's just how I Browsing around and got some more views of the island. Um, so that was cool. Now we're about to ride the bus and go to the Cup of Noodles Museum. Um, so we're gonna see what that's like. Sounds interesting. Pop it, pop it, sip it, a corn, reach, nigga on a one, baby, drinking that a corn, baby, butter, tea. Period. This is my childhood. I grew up on Cup of Noodles. Look at me now at the Cup of Noodles Museum in Hong Kong, period. 
Start what? <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> okay, so we are at this cup of noodle workshop. We're making our cup of noodles, I guess. And we supposed to write on it. I don't really know what she said, honestly. She gave us instructions, but I didn't really understand. No, <laughs> she had on a mask, and the accent <laughs> and the accent was heavy, so <laughs> I didn't understand. And John wasn't paying attention either, so we just we just gonna wing it. <laughs> pick my song. <laughs> he was picking his ratchet music, playing it hella loud in here. He playing sexy red, blasting. Artist of the year. Making us look crazy. <laughs> Artist of the year. But this is the cup. And then we we write on it. Oh. Alright, that's that's as artistic as I'ma get. So <laughs> that that's that's all that's I got. Nice that that's all I'm, I'm gonna give y'all. And then um make my noodles. Let me show y'all the ingredients. Yeah. They add leek and they add corn and shrimp. <laughs> so I picked all those three and then I just added like beef. Tiny shrimp like that? Yeah, yeah, those little bitty shrimp. One, two, three, seven. Cause egg? No. I ain't put no egg, I put no cheese. What is a leek? That's like green onion, pretty much. Look, they got pictures if you want to look. That's what it looked like. <laughs> No, but it coincides with this. You ain't got that on your side? No. It's, it's, so for l number three, look, leek is three. This is cabbage. This is chicken. This is kind of comma, <laughs> whatever that is. Beef. Oh, I don't like how that beef look. Egg. What the fuck? I don't like corn. <laughs> Cuttlefish, carrot, cheese. I like cheese curdles, and then that's pork. So that's what it's gonna look like in your cup of noodles, pretty much. Now I'm looking at uh, <laughs> the beef, I don't know. It's like dog food. <laughs> well, maybe I should change that option. I'm, I'm just gonna stick with it. <laughs> I'm gonna stick with it. Is that your name? Right, you're gonna stick beside him. <laughs> you gotta stick beside your options, you already picked them. <laughs> I added more color to mine. Add a little razzle dazzle, but I don't know why we did this. We're going to dinner in like a, in like an hour. So what are we doing? Honestly, we didn't know that this was gonna consist of this. We thought it was gonna be like exhibits of noodles or something. I don't know. We didn't know we was gonna come here and make noodles, like, but but they're gonna basically make the noodles for us. But I'm gonna tell them to throw some hot water in this, <laughs> so I can just take a couple bites of it. Because right. I do not want to carry this around and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna eat it later because my hotel ain't gonna give me no hot water. <laughs> they been on some bullshit, that's a whole other story. <laughs> they they missing a lot of stuff. They ain't got no steamer. I ain't got no refrigerator. Anyway. Pool. <laughs> they yeah, I can't use the pool. They told me the pool clothes. I was like, bro. But it's a nice room overall, you know, it is what it is. Every room has its pros and cons, I guess. John is living lavish though. His hotel room, he got it all. He got doors that open automatically to his bathroom. Must be nice. I just like a bidet. Look, and he got a fucking bidet. <laughs> I don't even yeah. know that till now. You ain't got one? No, I got no bidet. Damn. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> well, shut up. <laughs> I had one at the other hotel room. Actually, my first two. Wait, wait, but wait, not he did seats? He did seats. Now he now he's showing off. Alright. <laughs> yes. Oh, I have to okay. participate. Okay. <laughs> oh. Oh. Thank you. Mhm. Mm and then they they make our noodles over here, and they add the ingredients. That's chicken. Hmm. Interesting. And corn. Oh, that was like the, that was the base. Noodles, I mean not noodles, shrimp, the beef, <laughs> the leeks. Hi. Yes, looks good. Can you add guys add hot water or no? No? No, no water? Oh, mm. <laughs> 
coming out. Oh, thank you. This one is super cute. <laughs> John is popping open his damn cup of noodles. To do what with? You gonna eat it dry? The city is live. There's a lot of people out right now. I feel like a lot of people just got off work. So the streets is crowded. But it's not like I feel squished. Like people all up on me breathing down my neck. Also, people always talk about China and how, you know, they treat black people a certain type of way or they want to touch them or they stare or want to take pictures. Nobody is doing that to me here. <laughs> and maybe that's just Hong Kong specifically, but nobody cares. Nobody's paying me no mind, which I love. So nobody is like staring hard. Like they'll glance over quickly, like especially when I'm like recording, but then they go on about their business. They don't care what I'm doing at all. Everybody just mind their own business, which is excellent. Diamonds in the watch. This costs a lot. Never send a die. That's how you get shot. I DM in vanish mode. I do that a lot. Took her panties off and this thicker than the plot. All my S's ain't nothing. Them hoes busted. If my ops ain't rapping, they ass fucking. You ain't ready to pull the trigger. Don't clutch it. I know you on your fear, baby. Can you suck it? I'm a savage. Smacker, booty, and magic. So y'all, I'm taking video, but I feel like this video is just not doing it justice. It is so pretty. Like, it's like such a big city, but it's on the water. So it just makes it like so nice. But I just feel like it's not hitting. <laughs> It's not hitting as hard as it's hitting in person. Like I'm looking at it on this camera and I'm just like, ah. But it's so nice out here. And a lot of people are out, you know, after work. It's just vibes. You know, people are out on boats. The weather is really nice as well. Like it feels so good. It's such a comfortable temperature. Like it's nighttime, but I don't need a jacket or anything. So. It's so lovely here. There were fireworks exploding, but now it's getting colder. The leaves are turning colors. Why? It's just not our season. The one and only reason. Baby, oh baby, oh, our summer turned into fall. Damn, tell me where did all the magic go? Oh, hey. Yes, thank you so much. Good shit, John. Good shit. John is fancy, y'all. Y'all see this? All right, y'all. So the lighting in here is really bad. You probably can't see me at all. But this is a really, really nice restaurant. And we have a really nice view of the water. And they actually have a light show that's starting soon. Um, so we're going to be able to see that as well. So should be nice. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm at the train station now, or the MRT station, about to meet with my tour guide. Um, it's a lot more people here because niggas is going to work. I think I'm supposed to go this way. Um, but yeah, we're about to go to Lantau Island. I think that's how it's pronounced. So yeah, I'm about to go meet up with him. Slightly lost, so I'll, I'll talk to y'all in a second. <laughs> okay, I caught up with my tour guide. We continued to ride the train and then we got on a bus. So we're kind of far out from the main area in Hong Kong where I was. Um, it's called Lantau Island and it's like a fisher uh, village as well. So they have like a lot of fish over here and whatnot. Um, and then we're gonna go see Big Buddha later as well. like a nice change of pace 
because the main area of Hong Kong is just so chaotic, so many people. But over here, it's obviously far less people. It's super chill and relaxed. So it's a nice change. I like it over here. Alright, so Big Buddha is up there. I'm going to climb to the top. She told us, um, the tour guide told us that climbing to the top, it gives you good fortune for money. <laughs> so she said money is supposed to come easy to you if you go all the way to the top. So we most definitely got to do that. So okay, I need my crypto to pop off this year. <laughs> so definitely going to go to the top. I feel a little nauseous though. Um, I get motion sickness really easy and just being on the bus for so long and then the train and then we were on that boat, the motion was just like fucking with me a bit so I'm not feeling the best but I'm gonna power through it and, and, and go to the top anyway. So let's do it. There's a lot of black people here. <laughs> Whenever I see black people, I'll be like, you gotta do the nod. We well, gotta, you gotta nod up, actually. I'll nod up. <laughs> Alright, that's Buddha behind me. What up, Buddha? <laughs> um, I mean, it wasn't that bad. I am a little winded, of course. It's a lot of steps, but it wasn't too bad. Let me get the sun out y'all face. But yeah, I do feel like the the black people that I do see here, though, a lot of them are foreign. Like the black people I just passed and the lady I said hi to, I heard them talking. They sound like they were speaking Portuguese. It's just interesting <laughs> coming across other of black people from around the world, you know? It's a really sunny day, so it's super clear, so the views are really nice. And this is actually the second Big Buddha I've seen. i seen the one that's in Thailand as well. I feel like I've seen another one. I feel like I have. Did I see one in Bali? I don't remember. <laughs> but this is very familiar, okay? This Big Buddha is familiar. I feel like they have them in a lot of places. Oh, no, nah, no, nah, I gotta get a video of this. Y'all, look at this, look at this. <laughs> Did y'all see that? It's like, oh, I seen an Asian dude <laughs> with black hair in the wild. Okay, I've only ever seen it on IG in the past. Like, I saw this compilation on IG where there were these Asian guys who would, like, get this uh, procedure to have their hair kinky, and then they would be using, like, the curl sponge that the black dudes use. So it's just interesting seeing it in person. Like he, he really had some locks. He said, listen, I'm about to get these locks off. <laughs> I'm about to get these locks off, period. Listen, I don't personally mind it. Y'all let me know what y'all think about it. Um, I know some people are offended by it and they think it's like cultural appropriation. But as long as you are respectful of the culture, okay, I think it's fine. You have some people who are not the most respectful of the culture like a uh, bad baby for example when she wore her braids and then she was like oh who wants to be black just however she meant it it didn't sound right when she said it like that so you know people like that they can go to hell but <laughs> if you're respectful it's like get your hairstyle off it is what it is it's not a big deal to me personally um and i think maybe over time kinky hair will be more accepted i know some people are annoyed by it because they're like oh when black people wear kinky hair, it's not appreciated. But when other races wear it, it's, you know, it's admired and people, you know, like it more. So I understand that perspective as well. Um, but yeah, hopefully over time that changes, you know, and a lot of people admire kinky hair and, you know, they admire it on black people and non-black people. So that's, that's just my take on it. But anyway, very interesting to see that. <laughs> in person i was like eh, i gotta i gotta show my patreon people 
I gotta show my people, okay. Anyway, um, we got another like 40 minutes before we leave here and then we're gonna head back to the main Hong Kong area. It's been real, it's been real over here. It was nice to uh, come over here and get like a different, a different vibe, a different feel, you know? But my people then go say I don't want to buy I don't want to die I don't want to buy me I want to enjoy I want to fly I want to buy me too I want to feel What the hell? Why is he just right here randomly? Now this man is walking What's happening? <laughs> oh, he said I'm tired of y'all I'm about to hear Girl, I'm getting so familiar with taking this damn train <laughs> that I'm not even listening to Google's instructions. Like, they telling me to take this route, and I'm like, that's longer. Why would I do that when I could just cross over and go this other way? Crazy. I could live here easy. <laughs> you know? That's the thing about public transportation in other countries. Initially, it's intimidating, and you may get lost a couple times because I definitely have. <laughs> but after a while, it's like, oh, this is easy. Okay, y'all, so I just want to wrap up this vlog and really detail my Hong Kong experience. I really loved it there like I had such an amazing time it was hands down one of my favorite places that I have visited in all of Asia like easy and it's just so surprising because I did not expect to feel that way I really just thought oh you know I'm just stopping in here here for four days whatever I don't really care about being here sure but John wants to come here all right I'll go but I was like wait <laughs> This, this place is lit like it has such big city energy um but in a very interesting way and obviously it's not technically a city but when you think of a big city you think of tall buildings you think of a lot of people you think of a lot of shopping you think of chaos you think of traffic <laughs> so it has all of those elements but it doesn't have the elements that make big city living uh annoying like it didn't stink i didn't smell urine everywhere um <laughs> you know there was not trash everywhere it wasn't dirty there wasn't homeless people everywhere because those are also elements of a big city usually um and it had none of those things um but everything else just embodied a big city um so i really love that about it and it has so much charm and personality um and it was so beautiful and i know when people think of beautiful places they usually uh think of like uh places that have like mountains and valleys you think of like rivers and you you know you think of the the typical natural beauty but um big cities can be beautiful as well and and hong kong is such a great example of that um first off it's it's right on the water so i think that automatically makes it more beautiful and the architecture like oh, so lovely their buildings are are just so interesting they're constructed in a very cool way um like i showed you guys i was pretty much in the hood um <laughs> the monster building that's the hood uh the choice soy estate choice Su estate something like that um the colorful building that's also in the hood um but it attracts a lot of tourists because they are so aesthetically pleasing they are you know really cool to look at the colors and the way that they're constructed they're really close together um just really interesting cool buildings and, and it wasn't just limited to those two places it was all over hong kong that you saw that architecture so you know that was so cool and then the the speakeasies the bars they had so many hidden little cool spots um that we found on tiktok <laughs> and it was like if you know you know so you really have had to like look for these places so it was kind of like a a hunt you know finding some of these places so that was fun everybody was like super cool um so that's another thing let's talk about it <laughs> because um you know i feel like it's a common sentiment that uh black people are not accepted in in china or whatever um i feel like that is commonly stated and someone actually left a comment asking me to talk about this 
um, on my Instagram under the picture of, of me being in Hong Kong. Um, and they said that, you know, I always felt like I would never go to China because, you know, I always felt like it was racist. And I did not experience any, you know, discrimination whatsoever. Nobody was racist towards me at all. And I, I even went into it, you know, kind of thinking that, oh, will people try to take pictures of me or will they try to touch me or will they be fascinated by me? Nobody gave a fuck. <laughs> that I was that I was there okay and that is exactly what I like and again that's another element of being in a big city um that you know Hong Kong embodies because if you go to LA if you go to New York nobody cares that you're there people got places to go they worried about their own shit that's why you'll even see in the videos that I've reacted to like the only in New York videos and shit like that you'll have people doing all type of crazy shit dancing doing backflips on the train and shit and people would just be on their phone like anyway like completely ignoring them. <laughs> You know, and not caring. Hong Kong is the epitome of that. Nobody cared that I was there, okay? And there were so many situations where I was the only black person in the vicinity. Like, there no other black person anywhere. Nobody looked at me funny. Most of the time, people didn't even look at me. Let's be fucking clear, okay? People were not paying me any mind at all. But even when people did look at me, it was like a quick glance and they went on about their goddamn business. Nobody touched me, asked to take a picture with me, touched my hair, nothing. Nobody was fascinated that, oh, she's the only black person here. None of that at all. So, you know, I was also surprised because I feel like I've also been, you know, tainted by things that I've seen on social media. I really try not to be, but sometimes you can't help it when you're constantly force fed certain shit and propaganda that people force upon you. So you thinking that, you know, you're gonna pull up to, you know, a place in China and people are gonna be all weird to you. You might not have that experience. You might though, cause let's be clear. I cannot speak for all of China, obviously. I was only in Hong Kong. It might have been a different experience if I went to Beijing or Shanghai, or maybe not. Maybe it's the same case there. Again, you cannot let other people's isolated experiences dictate how you move, and you cannot let that taint your your perspective it doesn't make any fucking sense if you've never even experienced this shit how are you taking on that that ideology like what nobody has been racist to you specifically in china so why are you automatically thinking that people are racist in china it don't make no goddamn sense <laughs> and even if you did go there and have a racist experience it still would be an isolated experience you cannot make these ignorant generalizations it just doesn't make sense but also i feel like the idea comes from a lot of black people's experience growing up in america so if you were a black person who grew up in like an urban area in america you probably have encountered going into an asian person's store and them discriminating against you <laughs> you know them following you around the store thinking you bought to steal some shit or just being rude or racist um, towards you when they have fucking moved in your goddamn neighborhood. So I feel like that was a very common thing that I've even encountered before. I mean, nothing direct. No one has like called me the N word or anything in a store um, or specifically told me that I was stealing, but I've definitely felt like kind of uncomfortable going into an Asian person's like hair store or liquor store <laughs> or something like that. Um, so I feel like a lot of black people associate um, Asians with being racist and Chinese people specifically because they were the dominant, you know, race that would move into these urban areas and then treat black people poorly. It would be Chinese people, Korean people, you know, they were the main group. So I feel like some black people think like, oh no, nah, Chinese people are racist. <laughs> I ain't going to China. But again, you cannot make that ignorant generalization because that does not represent all Chinese people. It doesn't represent all of China, obviously, <laughs> obviously. And, and you know, uh, oh, now y'all want to, sorry about that, y'all. I was really interrupted by housekeeping. They can't be clean my room at 6 p.m., 6 in the evening. What the hell y'all been doing all day? Now I'm busy. Now I'm doing something else. But anyway, they clean my room. It's clean now. Um, but as I was saying, yes, the black people are traumatized, all right? They think that uh, all Chinese people are racist, so therefore they think China is racist. Um, and, you know, that's where the whole saying comes from, hurry up and buy, <laughs> you know, from the movie uh, Menace to Society, or was that uh, Boys in the Hood? One of those movies where the Asian lady was following them around thinking they was about to steal some shit, you know? So it's a very common experience that, you know, a lot of black people have encountered. So, I mean, I get it, but stop it. It's ignorant. <laughs> you cannot think that about all Asian people. But, um, yeah, like I said, nobody in Hong Kong stared at me or made me feel weird uh actually that's a lie nobody asian stared at me or made me feel weird but you know who stares at me a lot 
that I'm, that I'm noticing being here in Asia, white people. They stare a hole in my goddamn head. They stare at me so hard and I don't understand it. What? I feel like the Diddy meme. We, we both looking back at each other. What are you looking at? We're both foreigners here. We, we're, we're both the odd person out here. Why are you looking at me as if I'm out of place and you supposed to be? I don't know. I don't fucking like it. <laughs> you know, take that as you will. But it's something I have definitely noticed. I don't know if they're looking at me like, oh, you here too? Like, I don't know what it is. You know, come to your own conclusions. But it's definitely a thing. I've definitely noticed it in several places I've been in Asia. And I'm just like, hello, hi, what's up? Anyway, another thing I loved about Hong Kong was the public transportation. So quick, so efficient. You can get pretty much anywhere in Hong Kong on the train. Like, it goes everywhere. So I love that um, as well. Very easy to understand, very straightforward. Um, didn't have any problems at all using public transportation. Um, the thing that annoyed me though about Hong Kong was the, the cash thing, okay? Cash is king in Hong Kong, which don't make no goddamn sense. It's like, bro, get with the times. Y'all are so advanced in all these other areas, but y'all still holding on to, to this cash situation? Like, come on, I can't use my card? Like, how? Like, back in the States, literally a nigga on the side of the road would take credit card selling you some shit <laughs> the smallest of smallest businesses take credit card so what's going on here like why do i have to get in the cab and and give y'all cash like what what is going on with that and i read somewhere that all of their taxis are pretty much ran by a small number of like taxi companies so they are very organized and it's this big system so it's not like oh it's just you know, one person, one guy, and he got his cab, and he's struggling, and he can only take cash. No, these are companies that, that run these taxis. So I'm like, what, what, what's happening? I don't get it, but whatever. <laughs> That's a common theme that is in some parts of Asia, and I don't understand it. Not all parts, though, obviously. There are definitely some places that um, I've been, and, you know, I never have to use cash ever. Singapore, never had to touch cash um Sri Lanka too so anyway that was my experience in Hong Kong overall very very positive highly recommend would definitely go back in a heartbeat uh but yes hopefully y'all enjoyed this vlog and all of this info and yeah I will see y'all in the next one Bye.